So I've explained the Viterbi algorithm before, but now we just quickly review Viterbi algorithm and then implement it in PyTorch. So it's very important for conditional random fields. So for Viterbi algorithm, what we are doing is for linear ch for linear chain conditional random field, we are uh, maximizing the probability of y, your tags given your input uh, here in natural language, your input utterance. And we have some parameters. But for HMM, the only thing is it is joint. It's, it's not discriminative as we have in conditional random field. In a uh, hidden Markov model, we have a joint probability. And so he's an amazing scholar. So VTRB for both hidden Markov model and conditional random field. Well, I have used conditional random fields in my article. Uh, and it's very important, uh, especially if you combine it with different paradigms. And so let's say we have a trained model, either hidden Markov model or conditional random field. So everything, we have learned everything. We have learned the transition matrix. We have learned all the parameters of emission. So now that we have all the parameters, and we have trained our model. How how do how do we actually work out the optimal sequence of states? So this is the problem. So what is the maximum probability at each point? So we need the Viterbi algorithm, this data structure, and this is just the back pointers. So given an observation sequence and hidden Markov model. It doesn't matter, you're using forever, we can use it for everything. What is the best hidden state sequence? How do we choose a state sequence that is optimal in the sense that it is it best explains the observations? So the, th the simple thing that we do is brute force, but in computer science, we are much more smart. And so we do, we try to use so we don't like brute force, it takes time. This is the order of complexity. So it's computationally intractable because for each hidden state sequence, computing the probability of observation given the Q, your states is, we pick the sequence with the highest probability and so it's brute force is computationally intractable. So that's why in computer science, uh, I've I've seen more than twenty algorithms in computer science that uses d dynamic programming, and uh, we can create even more recursive uh, relations in in all machine learning and natural language processing uh, to to improve natural language processing. Because after all, CRF and HMM are just uh, very particular and restricted type of. Uh, a bigger topic, which is called structured prediction, which I really like. So if you work on graphical models, you can you can have much more complex things and create new using, for example, variation combining it with variational inference. So you can you can create a kind of uh, combination of supervised things and unsupervised stuff and recursive relations for dynamic programming to have a more scalable algorithm. So let's continue with the VTRB. VTRB algorithm is, is another, as I said, dynamic programming, is another structure. The structure is like this. So recursive is that for, from time t minus one, you go to t. And if you, you go it for different, for example, I will explain it in the next lectures, in the next slides. So we find the best hidden state sequence given observations in the model. And so each cell represents probability of being in state J after first T observations, these are observations, passing through most probable sequence. And your lambda is model parameter. So this is the structure, this is the data structure that you need 
because you can recursively compute them very efficiently. But let's change our terminology because I, I, I always use this in my article and I really like this simplified, very elegant uh, terminology. So when we say pi j and s, it means uh, maximum probability for any state sequence ending in state s at position j. Position j means time step j. So we know that time step at time step one, we know it starts from, from this. And the rest of that is just this uh, uh, relationship. But we use a recursive formula so that we connect our data, data structure at different times. And so, uh, so that we can just store them and take advantage of what we have stored in our back pointers. And so when we say what is the probability of observations and your, and your, your sequence, we can say it's just the maximum of uh, m. m is the last time step when, when we reach state s. So the algorithm runs uh, in this, this is the time complexity. It's much, now it's much better than the brute force. You can see what we will be a shortest pass algorithm. If you have seen my lectures on approximation algorithms, you know shortest pass is really important in, in uh, computer science in general. So you can think about it like that. But we are also storing these back pointers. So if you code it in PyTorch, I will show it that we also store this because at the end of the day, this is what you need. Uh, and we use this for just just a recursion relationship and we get something, and this is transition and this is emission. And uh, we use back pointers, as I said, we store the indices and so we need them to see the highest, and we also calculate the highest probability of any sequence using just this. So implementing in PyTorch is so easy. You know, first we define your back pointers. This is for back pointers. <clears throat> B is your best path. And depending on the size, we have the different length. And uh, so here you see that back pointers has uh, shape B, L, and C but the maximum score is just uh, B and C. C is uh, the number of, C stands for class everywhere. So here, what is class? The number of tags that you have. For example, in part of speech, in semantic tagging, universal semantic tagging, in uh, any kind of tagging that you're doing, it's the number of tags. And so maximum score after the loop is just final accumulated score. Uh, so this is the, the, the slight difference between maximum, this pi and s, what, what we are doing here. You see, we always add this transition. This transition is added here. And we know that we should also add the emission. And we add emission here. So we are adding emission here using this plus. And uh, so because we have calculated that, finally we should get the maximum. So at each step, we also get maximum, but at the final step, because it's, we are in the loop after, uh, inside the loop, then we get the maximum. So this is the best tag this one is the best tag at last time step. Uh, so this was the data structure that you need, the recursion law. You go from pj minus 1 and s prime to pj and pi j and s. And uh, so to recover identity of highest probability, you just need to know uh, this 
S is back uh, is back pointer of J and S J. So batch size is B. Uh, so best uh, so we store all best paths in in this list. So best paths we uh, because it's a list we append these best paths and how we do it is just this recursion relationship and. Uh, and we are just appending. We have already done that. So we are just appending. Uh, I mean, we we reverse because because we are starting from end to the to the to the beginning. So we append the best pass. And BPS is as I said, it's back pointers. This is back pointers that we store. And what you need to know is just a rev I review some basic stuff in programming Python. And so we reverse the sequence of list using this reverse of alpha. Alpha is a list here. We reverse it. So it becomes DCBA instead of ABCD. So let's review what you do with these slicing things. For example, I love semantic parsing. If I just use minus one at the end, you are omitting the last character. But if you are using double colon like this, double, then you are just uh, reversing everything. So it's, it's different from the first example that I told you. Here we are just reversing. We are reversing, so I start from end to the beginning. So here, not only we are reversing, I, I love semantic parse I and G. So for four, we have three. For three, we have two. We omit two at the, from, the, from the end of that. And here, so you understand uh, what, what it means. So minus one always means reverse. So slicing is very easy. You see, we start and stop. And this is the time step that you use. It's very easy.